Hello everybody. Um, today's video is going to be a bit different. So, in Jewish uh, tradition, uh, we have something called a yard site, um, which the word yard site is, is a Yiddish word. It's a combination of yar, which means year, and site, which means time. Essentially, it means the anniversary. Um, and it's used for the anniversary of somebody's death. It's a memorial, you know, that's um, on the day of every year, on the day that somebody has passed away. Um, and uh, today, um, I'm, I guess, observing the uh, yard site of a friend of mine who last year I got the news, um, took his life. Uh, his name was uh, Meta98 or Michael Heredia. Some of you may know him. If you have been with me for a while, you saw the video last year. Technically, in the message, it says he, it was uh, <clears throat> March 17th, but I got the news on the 19th, so I'm observing today. Um, on a yard site, in uh, you know, Jewish, Jewish tradition, uh, people generally light a candle in somebody's memory and uh, say prayers for, uh, so that they're you know, soul can, um, get, I guess, closer to God. Um, just, uh, we pray that, you know, that they're, I guess, uh, just doing well in heaven, do things, try, try to do things in their merit, things like that. So, um, usually we have a candle that, a specific candle that stays lit for the full day, 26 hours. I don't have one. I just have a regular candle, so I'm going to light that. You're not really going to see it on the video because of the limits of my camera, but assume that this is going to be lit over here. You can see it. Like, you can't really see it. I'm sorry that I had to show you that. You can see it reflected in my glasses. How about that? Okay, so this is going to be a bit of a rambling video. Um, I just want to talk about a few things related to this. And, um, if this isn't your thing, if you don't really like it, um, and you want to tune out, that's perfectly fine. Um, I just want to leave you, if you want to go, I just want to leave you with one message that life may really suck, but just remember that your life is worth it. And don't let anybody tell you otherwise, not even yourself. You know, if, if you don't give a chance if you if you take away your chance for things to get better then they definitely won't and that sounds cliched but it's that's what I'm going with here um, for those of you who are staying uh, first I just want to talk about Mike a bit um, so he was my first subscriber on YouTube way back in 2011 uh, back when I started Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, the horrible, horrible quality of the videos and everything um, this is back when video responses were were still around. So I, uh, you know, I attached it to uh, one of Chuck Conroy's videos, and uh, you know, he accepted it obviously. Uh, and uh, Meta saw it on uh, on there, and he checked it out, and he said, "Hey, this is good stuff," and he stayed with me through there commenting on pretty much everything it was really great he was a he was just a, a very good friend throughout and um he had a lot of trouble his life really sucked he he lost his sister and, and just everything everything was really getting him down and um you know i i uh i didn't i didn't think that he was in the worst state of mind, but I, I knew that, that these things were going on, and I'm not going to do the thing where I beat myself up over, you know, what I could have done, what I should have done, because I spent the last year doing that. I'm not going to do it on video right now, but suffice to say, I think things could have turned out differently if I had tried or did, done different things. I don't know. It's not, that's not something that I really can say or not say, because that's not what happened. Uh, the fact is that right now he's not with us, and um, 
He was a good kid. He was like a brother to me, and uh, I really miss him. Um, so, I talked a lot. If you want to look at that video, I mean, I, the, the, the video from a year ago, I completely lose it. So, I don't know if it's painful for people to watch. It's painful for me to watch. I can't look at it now. Um, but, the... Um, Just, uh, I want to talk about how it affected me this past year. Um, last year around this time, I was, uh, I guess in terms of, uh, in terms of my life, you know, I was, I was pretty much where I am now. Uh, I was on chemo, I was on the same chemo that I am now, but I, I would have to say I was getting into the groove of where I was. I had just gotten around 4,000 subscribers. I was doing the 4,000 subscriber tournament that eventually led to, I was supposed to do Wind, Wa Wind Waker 1, actually, but I decided to do Paper Mario because I thought that, uh, that's something Mike would have liked. Um, but uh, it was, I was at 4,000 subscribers. I think I was close to, well, getting close to a million total views or something. I don't remember. Um, but uh, I was, like, really in a groove of, you know, actually, like, catching up with my life, you know, trying to get things. And then I got the news here, and it kind of broke me. Like in a serious way, um, I I essentially lost a great deal of the hope that I had built up. Um, you know, I on one hand I I kind of despaired for the future. On the other hand, I said that I'm gonna get through this no matter what, be just because. You know, I have to live at this point. You know, I can't, uh, I can't actually lose things. I'm sorry that I'm tearing up here. And, uh, I spent, I spent a good deal of time just this past year essentially hopeless just going on because uh because I had to but um I didn't actually think that there was going to be a, a positive end and, um, the reason why I'm saying this is not just because I want to let you guys know where I've been but um, just the effect that you can have on somebody else. You know, you can think, you can think that, that things are horrible, that life is horrible, that um, nobody, nobody cares about you or, or things are too, too, too hard to go on. But, you know, the fact is that there are people that care for you. And, um, it doesn't always seem that way, but, you know, I guarantee that for every, each and every one of you, if you go, there are going to be people that are seriously affected by it, that, that will mourn over you, and maybe that's what you want, but that's not what they want. And that... I don't want to say that it's selfish, but you you know it's one of the reasons why throughout these years I never I never got past thinking about not living anymore is because of all the people that would be saddened by it. Doesn't mean that I've not considered it at all. As I, I do have to admit that since uh, even before the cancer diagnosis, um, when I was having the, uh, the crippling pain from the tumor in my spine, I spent a lot of nights wondering if maybe death was better. 
you know, putting an end to the, uh, to the pain. But I stuck through because I knew that there were people out there that, that cared about me. But, uh, I think the only thing this past year that really brought my hope back was, you know, about a month ago when I got the, um, the biopsy and they said that, uh, you know, what I have is, is 90% dead, you know, a validation of the, of, of the struggles of the past two years now. I think that was the only, the only good news, really. You know, I've, um, uh, over the past year, I've, I've destroyed through inaction, not, not by, uh, pushing them away, but just through inaction. I've destroyed a lot of, uh, friendships. I've just ignored people. I've stayed away from, uh, from trying to help, trying to be there for people just because you can't go through that again. It's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. It's, uh, it's important to, uh, to be there for your friends, but the best that I could do was just be somebody in the background, no longer active. I spent my first few years on YouTube, especially when I actually got a Twitter account, trying to be friends with everybody, trying to be nice with everybody, and uh, I found that I couldn't, I couldn't put up with that burden. When all is said and done, what did it do? And that's, that's not really the right way to, to think about things. But, um, even through all this, I've seen, I've seen a lot of, I'm sorry, I'm rambling. I've seen a lot of people that, I mean, if you look at just about everybody, especially like my friends on, on Twitter and, and everything, life really sucks. Life really sucks for everybody. And the fact is that nine times out of ten, your life is going to suck most of the time. And I've seen that with my friends, seen that with myself. And you kind of wonder, you start wondering, well, what the hell is the point? And the point is, life sucks. But then you see happy people, and you say to yourself, well, their life doesn't suck. And that is false. I guarantee you, every single person that you know, their life sucks. And that's a fact. They may not say it, and they may not show it, but their life sucks. So what do you do? How, how do you live? It's not easy. It's really not easy. And... I guess just the... The, the thing is, you know, you see these happy people. Why are they happy? Because they find things to be happy for. But that doesn't mean their life doesn't suck. And even when life is good, it still sucks. It's just a fact. So, like I said, what's the point? The point is to find happiness where you can. Somebody tell a funny joke? Revel in it. You know, it's like uh, on Twitter, I tend to... Um, with conversations either with uh, John or other people, you know, just completely go overboard with responses and things and... Uh, you know, when I'm recording the Sephirather or Let's Play videos or whatever I'm doing, you know, it's it's fun to just take something to the extreme in terms of being ridiculous or whatever. 
And it's not because I'm a fool or because I'm a, je- a, a jester, a bunch of jokers. Is because you need to find things to to brighten you. You know, you have to uh, find little candles along the way to uh, brighten you know the long tunnel of life, long dark tunnel. And uh, thing about a candle is that as the candle burns, it goes down and eventually goes out. But then you find another one. Or as the candle's burning out, you light another one. And you take that as far as you can as you walk down. And then you light another one and another one. And candles don't provide a a heck of a lot of light. But you can use a candle to see where you're going. Make sure you don't stumble on rocks along the way. Make sure you don't hit the wall or the ceiling. You know, the candle isn't going to show you the, the path ahead, but it will keep you from stumbling in the present. And, you know, that's just. That's one of the things that's gotten me through this year. Just taking some of the little things. Just uh, reveling in them. Pants on head week, box on head week. Meta started pants on head week, by the way. It was his idea. All the way. I would never have thought of it. But, um, just the stupid little things. And it's important. It's it's really important to to do these things. And just... Hold them, hold them close to you. You know, I, I spent, uh, uh, I've tried for several days to try to like collect my thoughts here so it would be cohesive, but it's not going to work. Um, I've spent a lot of time the past few years, you know, just contemplating my own mortality because when you got cancer, you kind of have to accept the fact that, hey, there's a chance that the medication will not work. And for a while, that's exactly what it was. It was not working. And I ended up just being suffering for the first few months through heavy chemo that did not do a single goddamn thing except for make me lose all my hair. You don't know how much I miss my hair. That's like the thing that's that I can't look in the mirror anymore. It's hard for me to look at the camera here because the whole screen is the camera. That's why I wear the hat. Um, but uh, you have to contemplate your own mortality. And some people you know, do that on a regular basis even though they don't have a life-threatening disease or illness or whatever. Because their life sucks. And they think, well, you know, what will be the difference if I'm gone? And, uh, you know, I came to, I came to accept the fact that I could die. And then I started getting hope again. And like I said last year, that that hope just came crashing down around me. Said, hey, death, death exists. Can't stop it. Can't stop some people from bringing it upon themselves. But you wish you could. Um, just trying to get my thoughts together on this. Um, but even if you accept your own mortality, it's, it's really important to fight, to live, because, you know, it's, you really, you really don't know the effect that you have on other people. I have, I've, I see a lot of people that, that talk regularly about, you know, I, I don't belong, or, you know, why am I here, things like that, and it disturbs me, because I know that people have the capability, everybody has the capability to kill themselves, and I don't know what I would do if I would lose any more, any of my friends. It's just, uh, it's... 
I, I hold everybody, everybody that I'm friends with, if, if, if I talk to you on Twitter, or if I talk to you, you know, in comments, or on Facebook, or whatever, on Skype, which I don't use anymore for a good reason, I'll talk about that later, um, just, uh, uh, if I, if I talk to you, it means that I, I care about you, and, you know, I consider you, I consider you somebody who is worth, you know, <laughs> worth the, uh, the air that you breathe, worth the food that you eat, worth the, uh, time that I spend on you. And, um, I've said this a lot in the past, but time is something that I hold very dear to me because it's something that I may not have. Or if I, uh, even if I, you know, get past the, uh, get past this cancer, there's no, there's no guarantee it won't come back. There's no guarantee that this is shaved decades off of my life. Nothing. So time is important to me. And if I spend time on you, if I spend any time on you, it means that you are important to me. And I would not lie about that. You are very important to me. If you weren't important to me, I wouldn't make these videos. I wouldn't be on Twitter. I wouldn't make jokes or talk to you or do anything. And, uh, and that's a fact. It's not something that I would lie about. And because you are important to me, I would never want to lose you. And it doesn't matter what you think of yourself. Whether you think that you're worthless or, you know, nobody's there. And there are times where, you know, in the middle of the night or in the darkness, you're alone and... You know, you just, you despair of everything, and everybody has that. And, um, I, w I wouldn't go far as to say take comfort in the fact that everybody goes through that, but you have to understand that you're not alone even there. And even if you think that you are alone, because there's nobody to talk to or nobody to say, just remember, there are people, myself included, who think about you. Every second of every day. And I can honestly say that I've thought about Mike every day this past year, every single day. When I try to sleep, when I try to record. When I do everything, I never forget. I always think about him. And, um, I think about all my friends, and I think about their troubles, and their victories. So, just, you're never alone. You're never alone. And it's not just me. Everybody, everybody out there has, you know, if it's not your family, or at least your blood relatives, it's your family that uh, you made for yourself. I see a lot of people referring to their uh, to Twitter, you know, their Twitter circles as their family, and as it should be. I thought of uh, Meta as my brother. There's a few people on, uh, on, uh, I've met through YouTube that I consider brothers and sisters, you know, like, uh, John, Christy, Ben, there are others, but I don't want to make an exhaustive list because then people will get offended. <laughs> Why am I not on that list? That doesn't mean I don't love you. It just means that these people I've, I have a special relationship with. But, um, 
so what do I do each day? How do I get through the day? As I said before, you know, you find things that, that make you happy. Um, I, I've had correspondence with, uh, with a few people. Uh, one of the things that I'm very grateful for is that uh, Christy has, uh, the past two years uh, at PAX East, uh, gone around getting uh, signatures just from people, from fans, from uh, people that I'm a fan of, and um, sending them to me. So I hung them up on my wall over here. Let's just not, not, not knock the candle over. Let's put that over there for now. Um, as you can see, this is where I've had the people like Chuck Conroy, Luca Jin. Uh, here I have uh, John and Ben and Midnight and Beyond and Cyrus and can't really see, but down here is more pictures from her and and uh, just people that have um, people that have have signed it and you know every morning I wake up it's my bed here every morning I wake up and I look at it and it makes me smile because I know I'm not alone. That there are people out there. And, uh, I realize that not everybody has, has signed stuff, but the point is, just, it's important, you just surround yourself with reminders of the people around you. And it may not be pictures that you can put on your wall, but, you know, on your computer, something else I put on my computer is, uh, you know, Windows has a feature to cycle through different backgrounds. So, you know, I have some cool pictures there, stuff that I drew, but I also put things that other people have drawn, things that remind me of them, or things that they've drawn for me, or whatever. Um, and every so often, it cycles to that picture, and I, I'm reminded of, of them, and of better times, and it makes me happy for a little while. Maybe make them happy for a while. And, um, that's how I get through my day. By just little reminders. So, <coughs> so always something there to remind me. And then sometimes I look at other pictures, like one of the pictures I have over there. I call Tribute to Friendship. It's a picture I drew a while ago long while ago of a bunch of friends and one of the people there is Meta and I look at that every day and I'm, does it make me sad a little bit but it makes me happy too because it reminds me it reminds me of the friendship that we had and the good times even if someone isn't there anymore that doesn't get rid of doesn't get rid of any of the good times that you've had together and uh, it's important to remember that. And uh, I promised I would talk about Skype. Um, I used to use Skype a lot. And I used it less once I got sick because honestly I didn't have the strength to talk to people. I didn't always have the time. Uh, I became very involved in Let's Playing and is kept trying to catch up on videos and you know it just didn't it didn't work out with the Skype. But I haven't used. I think in the past year, I've used Skype five or six times for conversations, uh, not related to Nintendo Project or whatever, uh, or like a Much Games Project. You know, personal Skype calls, I don't think I've really made. I made a few towards the beginning of the year. I was trying to help somebody um, who seems to be better now. Um... And uh, just for a couple people that asked me to be on, and I'm not talking about the Sephiroth either, that, that doesn't count. Um, but uh, just like a few people who asked me for uh, things for um, um, collab stuff, you know, the, you know, having me as a guest on their Let's Play or whatever. And the reason why I don't use it anymore is because, honestly, I'm scared of it now. I'm scared of human interaction. 
I'm horrifically scared of human interaction. I always had a social phobia. I mean, I was, I was really not good at the whole talking to someone in real time thing. That's why I like Twitter. It's because you could pretend you're away from your computer and like wait an hour before talking or say, oh, sorry, I didn't, didn't notice that you asked me an important question. And I'm not going to lie and say that I don't do that because I do that. Um, but I'm really, I've, uh, I lost the ability to, uh, to talk to most people. Uh, and it, it fills me with anxiety now because I know that if I get close to them, then I'm going to be burdened with, with their life on top of mine as I was with, uh, with Mike. And, uh, I used to consider myself a, a strong person. You know, I have, I have a incredible tolerance for physical pain. And a lot of people have, uh, like doctors and my parents have commented on that. Like, you know, when I, when I had the, uh, the back pain, you know, the doctors were saying, you know, most people, you know, I, like after I got the surgery and the doctor saw that my uh, spinal cord was essentially not well, it was essentially cut off from like the the lower back down he was he was surprised that i wasn't fully paralyzed at that point and he said yo i don't think anybody i like i wouldn't have been able to to walk in your condition and i just have a high tolerance for pain and it's something i can put up with which is why i've lived through the chemo so far is because i can put up with it and i also have a very high i have a lot of patience I have a lot of uh, tolerance of what people say, things like that. That's why I can put up with some people more than others. Um, I just have a high tolerance for things. But I found that I don't have a very high emotional tolerance anymore. I used to. I used to, I mean, with putting up with all the chemo and everything, I, I was able to just block that away. I just, you know, I could just uh, put it within the inner recesses of my mind and forget about it, but not anymore. Uh, I this past year was hell for me. It was it was a living hell, and I will not lie about that. I each chemo week was was just worse than the last. Um, I got really depressed every single time. And normally the chemo gets me down and things like that. Because you feel sick. And it sucks. But I just... I didn't want to fight anymore. But I knew that I had to. And when you're forced to do something like that, it's not... When you're doing something... You know, because you're doing it, but it's not because you necessarily want to. I just wanted to lay back and and not do anything. And I can't say that... that uh, if I hadn't got the, the news about the cancer being mostly dead, I can't say that I would be any better right now than I was a year ago. Um, or this past year. I'm rambling again. Um, so essentially, if you stuck through this point and you've listened to me, main points are you never know what effect you have on somebody the importance you have to other people and some people you know it's you you may think that that you're worthless but you're not and i can tell you that you're not worthless because i don't think that you're worthless and if you don't think that my opinion about you matters then I can't do anything about that, but that's, um, you know, if, if you, if you know me and if you have any, any faith in, in my opinion or, or anything that I do, I try to be a person of integrity around my friends. And, you know, 
I wouldn't, like I said before, I wouldn't lie about this. I think that, uh, I think that you are worth it. And it's important to live, even if life sucks. You just have to find the things, the small things, the little things that, you know, just put a smile on your face and just keep going. And it's not easy. I'm not going to claim it's easy. And it's never been easy. Even in the good times, you know, depression and, and everything just sneaks up on you and just ruins everything. But that doesn't mean that you should stop trying. Sometimes you just have to keep going because you have to keep going, not because you want to. And, you know, a lot of people say, you know, just keep going and one day things will get better. But there's never a guarantee of that. I'm not going to lie to you or use a cliche and say, it'll get better. The sun will come out tomorrow. No, tomorrow's going to be cloudy too. Or it's going to be raining. It's going to be hailing. Or the sun is going to go out. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So revel in today. It's not like a uh, you only live once type of thing. I'm saying find the things today that make you happy. Don't don't bank your life on the future. It's important to have a future, but some of us don't have that luxury. Um, so it's important to just find things that make you happy. And sometimes the things that make you happy are your friends or the things that your friends have done in the past or something, a video game, uh, an action figure, a piece of food, something. I don't think that there's anybody out there that can't find something that makes them happy. Even in even in the worst of times, in the, in the darkest depths that I've been in, I... I went to some crazy places in the past couple of years. But I always was able to climb out because I know that there are people that care about me. Even if they weren't there at the moment. I just remembered and I thought about it. So, I hope that this year brings us, you know, Better news for all of us, but um, just keep in mind, guys, there's, there's someone out there that cares about you, and you're special and you're worth it. Let's hope that um, Mike's soul is doing well in heaven. And, uh, one day, one day we'll meet up again. Goodbye, everybody. Love you.